Anton Scoro, BJPin.com, standing next to a Hall of Famer in the sport and a legend, Matt Hughes. Uh, man, this this is an honor, sir. Uh, so you're out here at the UFC Fan Expo, and, and I've got to ask, Matt, like for you, there, there wasn't an expo really when you guys were, were around and doing your thing. So for you to be a part of this sport now as a Hall of Famer, as a man who works for the company, talk to me about the experience for you. Uh, it, it's it's great. You know, there's a lot of good fans here. I just went and signed a bunch of autographs that I didn't have to, but I wanted to because these fans write the paychecks for all the fighters and for the, all everybody in the UFC, whether you're an independent contractor as a fighter or whether you work for corporations. So these fans really uh, make it happen for the rest of us. Now, you guys are BJPenn.com. You guys have kind of caught me here. Did you know that? We you see the shirt I'm wearing? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I, I kind of feel caught right now in the fact that I'm wearing a BJ shirt. Don't tell B, don't tell BJ I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> so Matt, with your new position inside the UFC, uh, did you talk to the guys before the expo and, and tell them to come out here and, and give them any advice with how to interact with the fans and the things to do? I did not. I had some uh, some guys shoot me texts on uh, what they could wear and this and that. And I said, it's very casual, wear whatever you want. Sandals, flip flops, uh, shorts, It's uh, this is extremely casual. What we really care about anymore is what the dress code is for, uh, is like uh, uh, press conferences and stuff. We just want you to wear something nice and uh, keep your keep your feet covered. So, BJ would be in trouble then because, uh, you know, I, I guess flip flops aren't allowed, huh? <laughs> uh, we would, we would, uh, I'm not the policeman, so I'm not going to run BJ down and say, hey, you can't go up there without flip flops. But uh, it, it's just a presentation. You know, this sport is growing and we'd like for a, a bunch of different angles of the, of the fighting game to, to grow with it. Well, and, you know, I mean, you guys, I, I look at the legends in this sport, you know, yourself, BJ, uh, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, I mean, the guys that really carried this sport, Tito Ortiz, um, and, and the sport has grown and changed so much. I mean, it's becoming more mainstream, the deal with Fox. So where do you see the, the future of this sport going? I think, uh, I think in the United States, this sport's going to grow in a small amount in the next five to ten years. I think across the globe, internationally, it's going to grow a thousand times in the next five to ten years. You know, they're really hitting these other countries. Uh, fighting has one of the one of the is one of the few sports that can really do that. You, you can't take football like that. You can't take basketball. These countries don't know what that is. But you know what? Every country can relate to fighting because it happens everywhere. So uh, they really are the only sport that has the the unique ability to be uh, international and uh, global. Well, and Matt, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you, because a lot of times guys that are coming up, you know, whether it's a new up-and-coming pro, uh, a young amateur, they never really get the opportunity to sit down and talk with you. And, and what I wanted to do was pick your brain, because you do work with guys at this top level, and, and you do help them. You're kind of a guide now for, for these younger fighters. But what's the advice you would give for a young amateur coming up who, you know, dreams of, of being, you know, a, a Matt Hughes, a BJ Penn, you know, when their career is over? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you three things, and I'm going to save the, the best for last. Number one, get a good manager. That manager is going to set your fights up for you. He's going to put the right opponent in front of you. He's going to give you the right time span. Uh, hopefully that manager is going to get you sponsorship as well as other things. Uh, a little more important than that is your training partners. Get a good coach. Get a good team. Um, you're going to learn uh, from, uh, from your coach and your teammates, so get a good camp. And the, the, the last and most important thing is, have a work ethic. You know, uh, this sport, you've got to out-train your opponent. You've got to be in shape in there. Uh, I've seen several fights, whether it be uh, the prelims in the UFC or small shows. These guys don't have gas, and they, they lose a fight because of that. If you've got a good gas tank and you can outlast everybody else, then uh, you don't have to have as much skill as, as the, your opponent. Matt Hughes said, go out there and do some farm work because it will help you out. Be a country boy. Uh, Matt, before I let you go, uh, tell these guys where they can follow you on Twitter. Plug anything you'd like, man. The microphone's yours. You know, uh, I really, I'll really, i take this time to thank the fans because you fans have uh, wrote my paychecks the whole time I've been in the UFC. Had somebody say me that, tell me that, hey, Matt Hughes, you and Randy and Chuck and everybody, you built this UFC. And I replied right back to him and said, no, I didn't build the UFC. You fans have built the UFC, so I, I got to say thanks to you guys. Matt Hughes 9X is my Twitter handle. There you go, and uh, 9X means nine-time champ, and it's BJPin.com, Anton Scoro, Matt Hughes. Take care, guys. Good day.